It's 7 a.m. on Lake Hood. For the next two weeks, Ted Stevens float plane base will become a staging post for an army of 20 pilots volunteering their time and planes to the largest sporting event in Alaska, the Iditarod dog sled race. The Iditarod would be almost impossible without the Iditarod Air Force. None of the air carriers out here have enough airplanes on skis to provide this kind of need and this kind of service. So it's full of a lot of, uh, lot of dangers. 47 teams of mushers and dogs travel across 800 miles of Alaska's backcountry, battling negative temperatures, savage winds, and mountain terrain. In this state, the mushers are as famous as Tom Brady. For Alaskans, the Iditarod is like our Super Bowl. You know, it's uh, the biggest, biggest event of the year as far as outdoor sports go, and that's our state sport, dog mushing. There's people that come from all over the world to do this race. There's a lot of aviation involved, whether that's hauling supplies, people, dogs, food, all the things that are necessary to make that race go around. Today, Nick Cunningham from Regal Air is flying supplies to one of the most dangerous and remote destinations on the race route. We're flying about 125 miles up to the Tatina River Strip. Afternoon, like a tower, Regal 77 Romeo. We're three two with Tango. We'd like to take off northbound. Uh, we are a to have on Beaver on wheels. We'd like to take off on our own risk. Regal seven seven Romeo departure from runway three two. We'll be at your own risk. Use caution. Loaded with gasoline, flying over uninhabited mountains, and with no guarantee of where he can land, Nick can't relax for a minute. You know they did around the. A beast of a race, and for those people that can complete it and do it, it's hats off to them. There's no groomed runway at the checkpoint. Nick must scout a landing zone from the air. The repercussions of landing in too much snow is it will flip the airplane. It's the most dangerous stop on the race route. A plane crashed there last week. You crashed the airplane. Now, how far are you from civilization? How far are you from help? We're gonna go take a look. Obviously, if we look at the runway and we don't like it, we'll just turn around and go home. The strip that we're gonna go to is over here on the river. Over on the right side, you can see where it's wind blowing and you can still see the ice and the dirt. Set between mountains, trees, and a frozen riverbed, there are few options where to land. Nick decides to go for it. A little bouncy and crabby with the tires and the snow, but good landing, everything worked just like we wanted. 